30. It's time for our meeting. You'll stand for the pledge, please. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible. This uh, Friday is Veterans Day, and I'd certainly, and most of us, would like to uh, thank our veterans for their service. Uh, safe, and we are very thankful for that. There's a lot of uh, things going on this Friday for this time, if you'll uh, have a moment of silence. Thank you. Call the roll, please. Mike Curtis. Here. Amber Brown. Jerry Sartain. Here. Joe Machoto. Here. Gary Farley. Here. Renee Curtis. Zane Cantrell. Present. We have a quorum. Thank you. Um, you have the minutes of our last meeting. Are there any changes or additions to the minutes? Move be approved, Mr. Chairman. I have a motion they be approved. We have a second. Call the roll, please. Mike Curtis. Yes. Jerry Sartain. Yes. Joe Machado. Yes. Gary Farley. Yes. Renee Curtis. Yes. Zane Cantrell. Yes. I want to announce now. Uh, announcement before we get started with the agenda items. Um, by now you guys should have all received an email, um, ex and except for Renee, um, for the training session that is scheduled for Thursday, December 1st. It's, it will start at 9 a.m. in this building or room and should finish about one o'clock and that will take care of our four hours of required training. And this will be a joint training with the Planning Commission and we'll have presentations from stormwater staff, county um, planning and engineering staff, as well as uh, the county attorney, Nick Christensen. Thank you for getting that together. I think this will be a really a great opportunity for each one of us to have some significant training. And I'm looking forward to uh, talking with our attorney and getting his thinking about a lot of things. <laughs> we might try to trick him, I don't know. <laughs> right, yeah. We'll probably touch on some of the same items that we touched on last year because it always helps to have a refresher. And also, if you aren't able to make the meeting, we will have RCTV record uh, the training session. So those who can't make it, we can send you the link to the YouTube video and you can watch it at home. Okay. Thank you again. Um, we'll get into our agenda. The first item we have is a request by Jeff and Megan McGinnis, this is their asking for a special exemption, exemption establishment of, of an accessory dwelling. What do you have on that, please? Thank you. Application BZA 2022-27 is a request for special exception approval for the establishment of an ADU involving a property located in the RM medium density residential district. And the property is located at 135 Reed Trail. Mr. and Mrs. McGinnis would like to establish an accessory dwelling unit for the purposes of uh, providing some housing for a family member. Um, they have uh, reached out to uh, TDEC and received a modification letter for the septic. And um, the reason that they are seeking f uh, special exception approval for the ADU is because it's less than one acre. And those properties less than one acre automatically have to obtain a special exception for an accessory dwelling unit. Um, the applicant has submitted um, drawings indicating that uh, the floor plan and the layout of the structure. Uh, they Initially, it was proposed to be slightly larger, but they have an existing structure on the property that counts towards the maximum detached accessories 
square foot that's allowed. So they reduce their drawings to come into compliance with the zoning regulations. Um, we received a couple informational calls once we posted the sign on the permit, I mean, on the property. And these are photos of the, the neighborhood. This is the existing home and in this area at the end of the driveway, you will see uh, that's where the, the accessory dwelling unit will be constructed. And so this is uh, the site plan showing its relation to the existing building. So the dark building is the princ principal structure and the hatched area is the proposed structure. And it will have a garage in the front and the dwelling unit will be located towards the back. And so you'll see the uh, this is oriented differently, but the garage is located here. It will have one bedroom and a living and kitchen area and bathroom. It will have a, a small porch and that will be the entrance into the accessory dwell, dwelling unit from the side yard. So it will not be visible from the right of way. And these are the elevations, the front elevation and right and rear elevation as well as the left elevation. So this left elevation will be what the neighboring property sees. So staff reviewed the application against the criteria for accessory dwelling units and we found that it met all of the criteria with the exception of the land area. And so uh, we recommend approval. Any questions on our staff? Do we? <laughs> I can't find it on, on the monitor but on the on a picture what is behind it there it just is that another <laughs> building back there or there is a structure it's 705 square feet it's a detached accessory structure and they wanted to retain it so they reduced the the area of the uh garage to uh, to meet the zoning requirements okay is there, is there anyone here representing this request if you'll come around please to the podium. I'm sorry. You no, that's okay. I was just going to indicate properties that are one acre or less are allowed up to 2,000 square feet of detached accessory structure area. And so they, they modified their plans to come under that number. You'll come to the podium. Just give us your name and any additional information you'd like to share with the board. That turn, on the, turn on the mic. out is a, a shed and most of what you're seeing there of the roof is lean-to which is exposed underneath the shed itself is quite small but the lean-to roof kind of makes it look like a bigger structure than it is any questions thank you may be seated thank you. we'll open this for a public hearing for anyone who'd like to speak on this close the public hearing this does have a recommendation to be approved by our staff. Uh, are there any further questions or condition, the conditions that you want to add to this? We have a motion that be approved. Do we have a second? Second. 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 Have a second. Any further discussion? Call the roll, please. Mike Curtis. Yes. John Bichotto. Yes. Jerry Sartain. Yes. <clears throat> Gary Farley. Yes. Renee Curtis. Yes. Zane Cantrell. Yes. The next item we have is a request by Brad Odom, who is requesting a home business, and this is meat processing and taxidermy service. What do you have on that, please? Thank you. Application 2022-28 is a request for special exception approval for the establishment of a major home-based business involving meat processing and taxidermy services for a property located in the RL zone. And the location of the property is 2775 Murray Cottrell Road. 
And Mr. and Mrs. Odom came into our offices uh, to discuss what their proposed plans were. They've been in contact with Doug, and after um, some conversations, it was determined that they could apply for a major home-based business uh, for the meat processing facility. Currently, um, on the 23-acre parcel, they do operate a taxidermy business under the minor home-based business regulations. We have never had any complaints on, on that and they will still continue to operate that, but it will be one, one business, uh, taxidermy and meat processing. The meat processing services will only be available for three months a year during uh, deer season, and they're trying to just fill the, the need for people who uh, hunt and would like their deer processed. Uh, they will... Um, have limited traffic. They're not proposing to have additional employees. They're proposing to have a five square foot sign on the property. Um, they will be constructing the building on um, the northern portion of the property. Uh, it will, at its closest point to the nearest uh, neighbor, it will be like 120 feet. It's uh, the building will be approximately 300 feet off of the road and they'll have parking areas for um, the customers who bring in the animals for processing. <clears throat> now, the applicant has uh, worked with uh, the state as far as the regulations for that type of facility. I do believe in their application materials, they would not even allow customers in the facility itself. They will have a separate septic system and has they've been approved by TDEC for the separate system that will be tied to the new structure that they're planning to um, construct for the meat processing. Uh, the, that area of the property will be gated, so th there will be an access towards north of the property, but it will be gated when not in use. Uh, we find that the request meets the criteria for a major home-based business. We received a couple informational calls, and one of those calls actually indicated they were in favor of the request. And, of course, uh, they'll have to obtain all permits and have the inspections performed by the building department to make sure that the structure does meet the building code. And we recommend approval. Gary, this would be uh, inspected by your department. Fire inspection. Local. Local. Who would do the inspection? The, the local fire marshal would. Okay. And I wanted to add, I'm sorry, they have made an arrangement with um, a contractor to remove the carcasses from the site. I know that with this type of use, that's a concern, and they already have made arrangements for that. Any further questions of the staff? Do we have anyone here representing this? If you'll come around, please. You'll give us your name and uh, any additional information that you'd like to share with this. And one thing that um, I'm curious about, uh, meat preparation, um, would this be uh, livestock and wild game or just wild game, or if you would address that? I'm Brad, this is Karis, my wife Odom. Um, right now we just plan to do deer only. I don't plan to do livestock at this time. Uh, Maybe in the future that might be a possibility, but not right now. Am I correct in saying you can't do both at the same place? You can only do one or the other, right? At the same time. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I believe you can, but you just, it can't be. Yeah. Thank you. Do you know Barbara and Shirley? I yeah. do. Their aunts? Yep. Questions? I mean, I... You did a very similar job. Thank you. <laughs> I guess that's Any it. other questions? Anybody? I do have, um, I guess, a petition. We asked neighbors and whatnot for if y'all want to see them or. We got a hold of almost all of our direct neighbors, and they were all okay with it. Give it this lady here. You want yeah. all of them? Or you want? Um, sure. I'll take it. 
<laughs> Thank you very much. You may be seated. We'll open this for a public hearing for anyone who'd like to speak on this request. Close the public hearing. Mr. I know Chairman. There is a shortage of this type of service in this county, from what I've heard and understanding. There, if you choose to make a motion on this, uh, there are a couple of uh, findings, staff findings, that would need to be included in the motion. Mr. Chairman, uh, the Odoms have been out there a long time. They're a good family. I recommend approval. I have a motion to be approved with these findings, okay? And second, any further discussion? Call the roll, please. Mike Curtis. Yes. Joe Machado. Yes. Jerry Sartain. Yes. Gary Farley. Yes. Renee Curtis. Yes. Zane Cantrell. Yes. It was approved. Uh, short meeting today. Thank you, all of you. It's the 14th. We'll be back here again. And Renee, we'll be forward to <laughs> your planning <laughs> on that. Any further discussion of anything? You are adjourned. Thank you. <clears throat>